In last week's video, we talked about the vector system inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll wait. Awesome. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about importing SVG graphics, whether it be logos, characters, objects, whatever it might be. And the goal is to keep them in vector, so that way we can animate them without losing any quality. Plus, I have a trick that no one else is talking about that's going to save you a ton of time when importing SVGs. To import a SVG file, go to the top of your screen under Fusion, Import, and then select SVG. Once you find your SVG, simply click on it, hit open, and then Fusion is going to ask what resolution we want to import it as, which seems kind of contradictory because Vector doesn't have a resolution, so why do we need to set one? But like we talked about in the last video, eventually Vector has to be converted to pixels, so that way we can view it on our screen. And that's what this is for, just to select that final resolution that it's going to be outputted as. So if I just hit OK, it's going to import it as a group node. And if I view this off my left viewer, you can see it's going to work perfect. Inside the inspector, we have controls for the background color, as well as under the image tab, we can set the resolution of the graphic. If we double click on the group node, it's going to expand it and reveal it's made up of polygons, backgrounds, and merge nodes. And it's not really that optimized because all of this can be done in just these three nodes. If I just view those, we have the same, same output as viewing this final merge node here. Fusion just adds all those to set the canvas size, allow you to change the background right away. So if we just right click on the group, we can do ungroup, and then I'm just gonna delete everything here that we do not need. So now we just have the two polygon nodes going into this background node to set the color. Now, this isn't really the system that we wanna be working in. Like we talked about in the last video, polygon nodes will convert back into pixels as soon as they leave the node. So if I'm inside of this polygon node and I change the size and scale it up, all of that's going to be in vector. We're not going to lose any quality. But if I were to add a transform node right after these nodes or even after the background node and then scale it up, you'll notice that we start to get the jagged edges because we can start to see the pixels. Recently, Blackmagic Design introduced the S polygon node, which works inside of the shape system so you can create vector objects. Now, the issue that we run into is converting this polygon node into the S polygon node. The most common way to do it right now is add an S polygon node, view it off in the second viewer, come back into the polygon node, select all the points, right click on them, come down to polyline, and then hit the copy button, then go over into the S polygon node, right click somewhere, come down to polyline, and then do paste. And nothing happens, because it pastes it all the way off to the side for some reason. So you have to select all this, you'll have to move it back, and then I'll have to perfectly align that with a W when I bring it over because all the position values are messed up. And if you have a really big graphic, that takes a ton of time. And since the resolutions don't match, the T is actually being stretched a little bit. So then you would have to come after the S polygon node, add an S transform, and then squish it down so it's the right, the right aspect. The method that I found still has its flaws, but it eliminates the most time-consuming part of that, of copying, pasting, realigning, and all that stuff. To understand how it works, we need to understand how Fusion stores node data. If we copy one of these polygon nodes, and then open a text editing program like Notepad, we can paste the node into here, and it's all stored in just plain text. It shows us all of the values that we've customized, and right down here you can see all the data for each of those individual points. Up at the top, it shows us the name of the node, as well as the node type. And that's the key right there. If we change this from polyline mask to S polygon, copy all of this code again, switch back into fusion and paste it, it's gonna remember all of that point data and convert it into an S polygon node. So now we have the exact same thing in just a few steps. And the best part about this is you can do it for multiple nodes at once. So if I copy both of these mask nodes, switch back to my text editor, I can paste it, and then just using a find and replace, I can search for polyline mask, and then replace it with S polygon. And now I can just do replace all, and once I do that, copy all the text again, paste it into Fusion, and now I have both of my letters. If I merge both of those up, the aspect ratio is still gonna be a little off sometimes. So to fix that, just add in a transform node, and then just use that same X size and Y size to get the correct aspect. The nice part about doing it this way is you can adjust all of them using just one transform node. Now not every SVG is going to be quite as simple as that. Some of them have a lot more complex shapes and even have multiple masks working together. So if we look at this one, we have three different masks. The first one is this W here, the second one is the P, and the third one is the cutout so that way it is transparent in the middle. Let's delete these bottom nodes, select all the polygons, go back in our text editor and paste all that, 
Then we can just use the same find and replace from before. And now when we paste these in, we're gonna have each one of these elements inside of the vector system. But the question is, how do we combine these two so that the one on the right will cut away from the shape on the left? Well, to do that, we're gonna do shift space and add in an S Boolean node. If we connect both of these up, we can view it off to the side and set the operation to subtract. And now it's gonna combine those together and create this. Sometimes you'll follow those same steps and nothing's gonna happen. And that's just because the inputs are backwards. So if you select the node and do control T in your keyboard, it'll flip those around so that they're correct. We can now merge these up together. And now we have the exact same logo, but in the SVG system. A lot of times you'll have to come into each of these and grab the color from the original logo as well. So you can change the color in the node itself or in something like the S Boolean node, it also has a style control. Or if you want, after the S merge, do shift space and type change style. And using this one node, you can change the color of all of them. And once we're done with it, do shift space, type S render. And now this node is gonna convert it back into pixels so we can use it with the rest of the nodes inside of Fusion. And another really cool thing about importing SVG graphics into this system is the new extrude node. If we add that in, we can take the output of this merge node and plug it into the extrude node. And if I view this off on the right, we now have the logo in 3D. And just using one slider, we can make an extruded version of it just like that. I have a fun upcoming step-by-step -step tutorial about how to create some graphics like this, so make sure to stay subscribed for that. And I'm not gonna pretend like this system is perfect. Far from it, actually. We need a way to import to the shape system without having to do all those extra steps. Like I said in the last video, this seems like a pretty easy feature to implement, so I really hope they do it before DaVinci Resolve 19. I'll see you guys in the next one.